Good morning and welcome to St. Luke's. It's the fifth Sunday of Easter. Happy Mother's Day. I want to say that particularly to all those who've loved us and raised us, who've put up with us in my case, for those moms who've gone on to glory before us, and for those mothering people in our lives who've helped shape us for the better. This morning's bulletin can be downloaded on our website at www com. That's stlukesscottsboro.com. You can also find this on our notes page of our Facebook. Our service this morning is the Holy Eucharist. We're glad to have you with us. Our organist who's here with me is Shirley Rosano. We have a lector coming from home. That's Nancy Galden and a special prayer partner I have today in Bob Yates. Uh, you may receive Holy Communion this morning via drive through We're striving to be as safe as possible during this very difficult time. So I'll be donning gloves and mask and passing out the consecrated sacrament to you between 10.30 and 11.30 this morning. Just drive into the parking lot and come under the portico and I'll offer you a blessing as well. For those of you who are unable to come, there's a beautiful spiritual communion prayer that we'll be offering together as well. And that's another reason to download the bullet bulletin to hold that and keep that with you. I wanted to also let you know that our sequence hymn for this morning, Thou Art the Way, is paired up with a gospel. And we've set it to some pictures, some a few pictures of work that we've done in following the way. There's a few pictures from our mission uh, work in Honduras when we partner with St. Thomas. There's some pictures of the pantry that we've now run bi-monthly bi and those who've partnered with us. We're grateful to those workers. And there's a couple of pictures of Storyville Day Camp, which you'll understand why once you hear the sermon. Stay tuned. Finally, I want to thank you all for your support. Yes, both financially, which is very important for the general fund, for those of you who've donated to the pantry and to the rector's discretionary fund to help the poor, You've been very generous and we are very grateful. We also are thankful for your encouragement, your emotional support as well. This is a trying time for all of us. And so I encourage us to continue to offer words of appreciation. And I personally want to let you know how grateful I am for the encouragement you've given me as we've worked through this time together. It's a wonderful group here at St. Luke's. I cannot wait until we can be back together again. We're still waiting word from the bishop's office on what that will look like. It will likely look a little bit different than just coming back together as a big group and celebrating an Easter service like we had hoped. There will probably be some guidelines and protocols. There might be some limits on the number of people we're able to have because we have a small worship space. I will let you know as soon as I hear from the bishop's office. We are also having a committee meet here together to make some decisions because I believe what we'll be getting are some guidelines and we'll have to make those particular to what makes sense here at St. Luke's. Your vestry will be meeting a week from tomorrow night also to make some of those decisions and we'll send that out to you. I'm hoping that we will be together again soon. I know that we'll be together continually online because I want to continue this. For those who are uncomfortable coming, for those who are actually comfortable being at home and worshiping with us, we thank you for being here. And now we'll begin our service with an opening hymn. That is the day of resurrection. It is hymn number 210 in our hymn book and it's printed in your bulletin.
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against them. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him and the witnesses laid the coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Here ends the reading. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me. O Lord, O God of truth, my times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness, save me.
prepare the way, the way of the Lord. Make straight every path, make smooth every road. Every valley will rise, every mountain made low. The salvation of God forever made known. He'll bring down the proud, how the mighty will fall. With one breath from God, they are nothing at all. He will lift up the lowly, give power to the weak. And all broken hearted, the comfort they seek. Prepare the way. Of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Christ, dear Christ. Jesus told his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory be to you, Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Arise, all women who have hearts, whether your baptism be that of water or of tears. Thus begins the speech of the abolitionist Julia Ward Howe lamenting the carnage of the Civil War. You likely know Julia Ward Howe as the poet who wrote the words to the Battle Hymn of the Republic. But she is also the woman who in 1870 authored the impassioned plea I just read, Arise all women who have hearts, whether your baptism be that of water or of tears. Howe's proclamation 
is part of the beginning of Mother's Day. With all things, this holiday has morphed over the years, but I like to hold on to, and I bet you do too, at least hold on to the fact of the origins of this day, that now what is a sweet, sentimental day to remember and recognize our mothers? This day actually began as a serious justice movement. Her proclamation goes on to say, in the name of womanhood and of humanity, I earnestly ask that a general Congress of women without limit of nationality be appointed to promote the alliance of the different nationalities the amicable settlement of international questions in the great and general interest of women. Women who had no right to vote, no agency, were called into council by her and into council with one another. Howell's work was inspired by the founder of the 1858 Mother's Work Day, Ann Jarvis, who created this day to combine the efforts to combat childhood death and teaching lessons of better cleanliness and health. This is in an age when vaccinations for most childhood diseases were not available and children died at an astonishing rate. In a day when women had no vote, no official power, they followed their hearts to create change for the better. As a mom and a healthy grown child of a sweet mom, I'm grateful to these women. Yes, for the flowers and the cards and the candy I receive on Mother's Day, but really for taking the initiative in their Christian calling and for believing that they had power to change things around them. The founders of Mother's Day, in my opinion, believed the words of Jesus that we read today. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these. Jesus' disciples believed, and the movement became a reality. The followers of Jesus continued to challenge Roman oppression and religious marginalization. They helped people to understand that Jesus' kingdom was for all. It had room for all. St. Luke tells us in the book of Acts that before the Jesus movement was called Christianity as we know it today, it was called the way. Luke calls it this time and time again, which reminds us that when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he is telling his disciples that they are to be about creating abundant life for people in the here and now. For a couple of summers a few years ago, I volunteered at a day camp established by the Diocese of Alabama in an area of the state about 45 minutes south of Tuscaloosa. It's a significantly impoverished area of our state. St. Luke's has had a few work, youth work at this camp over the years. This is Sawyerville Day Camp, and it's been operating for over 25 years now. For several weeks every summer, the camp brings together youth and adults from all over the diocese with local youth and leaders in Hale County to offer free summer programs and mentoring with a mission to serve God and improve race relations and enrich the lives of those living in poverty. Like any camp, Sawyerville offers children swimming time and group play. Campers learn about Jesus and eat good old camp food. The times I've been on staff, I've been the camp mom, which means that I run errands and help prepare and serve food and occasionally tend to scrape knees or headaches. And I do the laundry. Every afternoon when the day camp staff says goodbye for the day to the campers and the counselors gather for chapel and quiet time, I would collect the staff t-shirts and head to the local laundromat. So parents and kids can know who works at camp, the staff wear identical t-shirts every day, the same t-shirts every day. My camp mom job is to launder the shirts each afternoon. Now, summer in Hale County is hot. Only in Haiti can I say I've ever been hotter. 
At Soriaville, there is no air conditioning in the gym where the big kids play, and there's little air anywhere else. I got used to being wet down to my skivvies, as my father used to say. There's no AC in the laundromat either. I know I looked a sight carrying the baskets of t-shirts to the coin laundromat, and the pockets of my shorts were bulging with rolls of quarters. And my hair was stringy wet. One afternoon, while I was at the laundromat, I was switching the hundred or so t-shirts from all the washers into the dryers. You had to know which ones worked. Some just took your money. Others just didn't dry. They just spun the kids, spun the t-shirts around. And a man was watching me. He was doing his laundry there as well. And he watched me load all those wet t-shirts and stick the quarters in the machines over and over to try and get them dry. And the man kindly asked me, are you a coach? Got a lot of team shirts there. I smiled and I said, no, sir. Uh, these are camp t-shirts. And then I told him about Soriaville Day Camp. He said he'd heard about it. Been doing that for years, huh? And I said, well, this is only a couple of times for me. But yes, the church has been doing that for about 20 now. It's a good thing. I told him about the older kids from this area who used to be campers that I've been so impressed with at this camp. They were now serving as counselors. And then I told him about this one young man who was in college now, studying journalism. And he'd been a Soriaville camper. And now he was a counselor. And this man had shared some of his writing that he had done over this past year. And he shared with us the night before some of that writing. You see, a great part about day camp is that the young kids go home at night so that the counselors and the adults can get the organizing and the planning and get some rest and have some chapel time together and even play together. So the night before I met this man in the laundromat, it was staff talent night. The counselors were having great fun, sharing their singing and dancing on the stage, showing off all of their gifts. Then near the end of the night, this one young man came up on stage and started reading a composition of his. He began by telling us just how impactful Soriaville had been for him. All his life, he'd been, doing, he'd been told things like, you ain't going to make nothing of yourself, and the man is going to keep you down. And he believed it most of the time. But Soriaville, summer after summer, told him something different. This camp, its counselors and its chaplains, the friends he found here through the stories they shared and the games they played, they told him something different. Soriaville told him he was special, that he had the right to run and play and be joyful, and that he's steadfastly called by a loving God to dream for his own future. Through the gospel, these years at camp had told this boy he was loved just for who he is and that God has given him abundant love to share with others, too. On that night, he was doing just that. He was sharing. The young man got up on the stage and quietly read his story of truth with such courage and openness. The rest of us on the staff listened intently. The room was pretty much silent. I remember sending him quiet prayers of encouragement as he paused several times, struggling with his emotions. Eventually, the tears overwhelmed him. He couldn't finish telling his story. After a long pause, finally, one of the girls who'd grown up with him there at camp walked up on stage and sat down beside him. And she held him and hugged him and asked him if she could continue reading the, his own story for him. And she did. She read the beautifully written story of a boy whose life was transformed by love. Back at the laundromat, the man said to me after I told him this story, sounds like a team to me, God's team. Yes, I agree. You're right. God's team. Cloud in our worn out, washed a hundred times t-shirts, singing and playing and handing out high fives to every single camper when they arrive and when they leave camp each day, 
Soriaville is God's team sharing the love of God. This camp is one fine example of the way, the truth, and the life that Jesus is talking about. It is evidence that Christian community is, in fact, possible in a world full of selfless, selfishness and hatred and exclusion. It is too easy to believe the narratives around us that there's nothing we can do to change the trajectory of life all around us. The, go- the gospel witnesses against that. We can do greater things, Jesus says, if we'll just follow the way. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People We pray to the Lord our God, who is our shelter and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. We pray for our communities, for those confined to their homes and separated from family and support, for children removed from school, for those who have lost their source of income, for those who fear for their home, for those who have no home, for those offering extraordinary everyday kindness. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Lord, you are in the midst of us. Help us in our time of trouble. We pray for those concerned about their employment and for those who've lost their job, for those worried about loved ones and friends, for those concerned about their own health. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Lord, you are our refuge and strength. Let us not be afraid, even though the world is changed. We pray for all medical staff and hospital workers who go to work knowing the risks they face, for researchers seeking ways to prevent and to cure, for social workers protecting the vulnerable, for care workers providing contact and support to those who have no other help for teachers worrying about their students, for farmers, delivery and shop workers, keeping the nation provisioned for, cleaners fighting the spread of infection, for emergency responders who continue to give of themselves. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Lord be with us in our time of need. Help us to do what has been asked of us and give us grace to help others and patience to bear what we have to bear. We pray for the world, for the leaders of the nations and their governments, especially Donald, our president, Kay, our governor, and Robin, our mayor, for areas most besieged by the pandemic, for places where healthcare and resources are scarce. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Lord, may we seek to hear your voice in the silent times of our lives. We pray for those who are sick, 
for those afflicted with coronavirus, for those with other illnesses and conditions which leave them vulnerable, for those with poor mental health, for all who suffer, remembering especially Brevi and Kathy, John Will, Gary, Laurie, Kathleen, Alyssa, Deborah, Clifton, Harry and Nancy, Brad, Mac, Tommy and family, Alan, John, Nancy, Jim, Irene, Richard and Emily. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Lord, we trust in you because your love is constant. Bring us comfort and healing, for you are always willing to save. We pray for the church, for our fellow members and the body of Christ throughout the world, for the Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, for Key, our bishop, and Glenda, our bishop-elect for those graduating from seminary this month, and for all clergy, hospital chaplains, lay ministers, and for the people in their care. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Lord, you are in the midst of us. Keep us fearless in proclaiming your word and works, and make us to be lights in the darkness. We pray for those who have died, especially Katrina, for those taken suddenly, for those taken unexpectedly, for the families they leave behind, for their friends, for those who have died alone, and for those who have no one to remember them. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. This Eucharist is offered to the glory of God and in thanksgiving for all those who are working hard to share the love of Christ during these difficult times, both here in Scottsboro and across the world. Today we offer communion via a drive through communion so that we're all safe. Please come to the church this morning anytime between 10.30 and 11.30 a.m. Enter through the parking lot and receive your communion and a blessing under the portico. We hope you'll be able to be here. In the celebration of the Eucharist, we experience the real presence of Christ in the wine and the bread that are blessed and shared with one another, but also in the proclamation of the word, in the proclamation of the homily, and in the prayers that we share together as a community. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, 
in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to your command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things under subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. If you are unable to come receive the sacrament today, we offer a prayer of spiritual communion for you. This prayer is a personal devotional that anyone can pray at any time. It is to express your dear desire to receive the Holy Communion, in which the circumstances prevent you from being able to do so. Let's say this together. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Peace of the Lord, which passes all understanding. The peace of the Lord, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you 
and remain with you always. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Consider yourselves hugged. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.